every day we have choices. I mean, we all have situations. I mean, if you think about those archetypes of victim, warrior, victim, warrior, victim, warrior. So it's about helping people kind of define what those mean to them, mm -hmm. first of all. Um, and then understanding that it's really just a... Um, like a power dynamic, right? It's kind of, where are you putting your power, your energy, your, your worth? Hey everyone, welcome to the Brain Cage Podcast. This is Sean and we are here because we sense the urgency of healing, growth and change. Our goal with this company and podcast is to bring you tools and inspiration so we together can create a flourishing world, both inwardly and outwardly for ourselves and generations to come. My guest for this episode is an extraordinary woman a warrior at heart, an entrepreneur, a cellist, and the host of the Warrior Spirit podcast, Beth Sturdivant. In this episode, we cover a ton of ground, including what it means to be a warrior, weapons and tools, training for life. We discuss overcoming fear, facing adversity, and the role of turning inwards in this whole warrior journey. The way Beth emulates love and power at the same time, I think perfectly demonstrate what she calls a spirit warrior. This is one of my favorite conversations so far on this podcast. This is the stuff I highly resonate with and aspire towards. And I think you're going to enjoy the product of our exchange. So without further delay, let's get right into it. Like I was listening to one of your podcasts and you talked about training yourself on all aspects of life, right? Like a warrior train, like usually when we think about being a warrior, we think about like weapons and fighting mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. war and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's where the word comes from, right? It comes from the French yeah. word guerrière, like yeah. somebody who fights in war. But I think in 2022, in the 20th century, and sorry, the 21st century, um, we could we have the opportunity every day to redefine what that means and then to use the best aspects of that warrior spirit and the warrior uh, identity to, to shape ourselves, you know? And um, I feel like so much of the warrior character and identity is, is romanticized, which and there's a reason for that, you know, I mean, look at all the superhero movies and, and mm. TV shows it, because there's something appealing about that to us as humans. Um, and so what is that? You know, why, why are we, why do we glorify it and watch it and want to pretend to be that, you know, people who dress up at Comic-Con and all these things, you know, they dress up as these warrior type characters well my fascination is, is well how do we become that in a healthy way right how do we take those best aspects and then internalize them in our own lives so that we can become that warrior for ourselves and you know for our lives so that's my fascination and um how it's helped me uh kind of get through my own quote unquote wars, right? My internal battles, but also external ones as well. Because in the end, it, we're all responsible for our own lives. Nobody else is gonna save me, right? I mean, there can be some people that help, but I have to want to save myself first and foremost. Mm. I have to want to be alive, but more importantly, I will have to want to, to thrive in my own life in order to succeed, in order to overcome whatever obstacles I, I face. And then also, yeah. you know, cause then, then, then we take on the savior complex or the white knight complex where mm -hmm. we try and save everybody around us, but we're not, mm -hmm. you know, right. we haven't, right. you know, we haven't truly done the work on our own lives. And so then we start projecting and, um, our self-worth is contingent upon 
what other people think and what we do for other people and how we help other people, but really we're drowning in our own boats. So in our own water. So maybe I'm getting off at a tangent, but um, yeah, that's, that's my fascination with the warrior and coming face to face with the reality in my own life that while I romanticized that night, said I was a warrior and I wanted to be and people you know on the and on the outside people looking yeah. in were like wow you're so independent you're so strong you're so you know um smart like you're so driven all these wonderful glorious things but inside I didn't feel like that really deep down you know below the surface of of what I tried to I'll say pretend to be. And it wasn't a conscious thing. It's not a conscious thing. It's not like I am going to uh, manipulate people or I want to. Um, it, it's like, you know, that whole fake it till we make it. Um, I don't know if you've heard of that. You know, everybody says yeah. fake it till you make it. Cool. But I want to become it. Like, I don't want to just fake it. I want to become it. And if I can't become it, then I need to... I need to start understanding and discovering why, mm. you know, because then that, then there's that, you know, we have, there's a space in between who we are right now and who we want to become or where we are and where we want to be. There's a space in between, right. right. That we need to fill that. And if who I am today, and that's what I help a lot of people, you know, when I work with people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in groups, and I say, okay, well, you're not happy right now. Something, you know, true, like they're, they're here for a reason. I mean, really, if we dissect everybody at some, to some capacity, there's, they feel they're lacking in some way mm -hmm. or broken in some way or wounded or whatever, whatever words they want to use. So I'm like, okay, well, who do you want to be? And often we don't know because that's like a, That's like handing somebody an entire grocery store of, of ingredients and saying, what are you going to make? And you're like, ah, I don't know. So I like to start with, well, who do you not want to be? What do you not like mm -hmm. about yourself in your the life right now? Yeah. yeah. Cause then we have a, then we have a baseline because mm -hmm. what I do and everything in life and our journey is all about either engineering who we want to be or what we want or reverse engineering this the, the problems or the issues or the situations or the things right so we need to healing is re really just reverse engineering how we've gotten yeah. here right so somebody who comes to me and they're exhibiting signs of depression then we need to reverse engineer. How did you get to this point? What is, why are you depressed? What's causing depression? You know, depression is compounded um, on a spiritual and energetic level, um, compounded uh, inability to resolve issues or things from the past, right? To not feel resolved in life. So it's basically living in the past, right. but not in a healthy way. Yeah. Um, so then we re reverse engineer. Okay. What does that mean? How did you get here? How, what are the effects of that? And let's unpack that and then get to the root and then resolve those issues so that they no longer affect you in the present moment. Hmm. And most importantly in the future. So that's that reverse engineering. And then we get to the engineering part, which is essentially manifesting. Who do you want to be? So if today I am, uh, feeling worthless. Um, uh, I don't like my health. Maybe perhaps I'm overweight and I'm not happy with my, my body. Maybe yeah. Yeah. I'm abusing alcohol or drugs or whatever it is. Um, it doesn't even have to be extreme things like that. It can be, mm. uh, I mean, it can be a whole gamut of things. Okay. Well, so there, there's our baseline. This is where we're at right now. Now let's flip it. Okay, well, let's take example health. Right. Okay, I, I'm 
or a simple, something simple as I want to run a marathon. Maybe today mm. I can't run a marathon because there are some realities in that training and everything, but what do we need to do to flip that switch? Right. If I, if my goal is to run a marathon, I need to, I need, here's that space. Here's me now. Here's where I want to be. What do I need to do in the space in between? So it's the same thing with if I'm uh, not happy. Well, okay. Well, that means if I want to be happy, if my warrior is somebody who's independent and successful and abundant and all those things, then we, then at least we can start mapping out a direction and getting there. Now we know who we want to be, right? Then we kind of right. set our right. dial in that direction so that mm -hmm. if or when we fall off the path to getting there, you know, we mm -hmm. can always, it, we can get back on it sooner. Yeah. If that makes sense. Right. I think the difference between a warrior and mm -hmm. a dreamer is that warrior kind of choose their targets and then they strategize, right? rather just thinking about like like dreaming in a way like uh, creating fantasies right so, yeah dreaming's great yeah. dream is dream you have to be able to dream your world or your life into being mm -hmm. but the whole but the 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 premise there is being doing actioning that's where the warrior mm -hmm. comes in that part of you who's like okay this is where i want to go this is who i want to be and anyone, and we are all capable of being whoever we want to be. We can change. Mm -hmm. We are very adaptable, but that doesn't mean it's easy, right? Like there's mindset and then there's actioning that mindset because our, our thoughts mm -hmm. create structure, create, um, create things in our lives. My cat is snoring. So I'm going to just wake her up. Um, so the key component there is actioning, it's taking the make taking the steps and the actions to getting there, yeah. um, and it's not a straight line. Never, life is never a straight line, as I'm sure you you have probably experienced, because we all experience that. But we need to know where we're going to some degree. So for me, when I kind of started on my path to really becoming the warrior that I wanted to be, that that to really becoming myself, we'll say, right. I had to have a clear vision of who that was, hmm. right? And even though right. I wasn't that person to begin with, I knew where I was going. So then along the way, if something would happen, I'd be like, okay, well, would Warrior Beth do this? No. Okay, well, then maybe I shouldn't do that. Hmm. Would Warrior Beth feel like this? No. Okay, what do I need to do to not feel like this, you know, what, you know, what, what options do I have, et cetera, et cetera. It's really about navigating our own lives and our own paths, but knowing where we're going. Yeah, and uh, as you mentioned, like uh, this warrior archetype, which is very, it is very primal to us mm. as humans, but it's not like, uh, it's not the first protocol we take when we face adversity or we face any problem, right? The first is we kind of find support or solace in this victim mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking thoughts like a victim, acting like a victim, right? And most of the clients which you deal with and majority of people which we see out there. So this instinct there is this instinctive reaction towards victimhood but warrior archetype is primal so when that adversity get very intensified right then naturally a human what i have observed like naturally one that warrior archetype gets activated and you not naturally start to uh, channel that but uh, what I think like this, uh, there is this challenge that without getting like without having that intensified adversity, how do we channel that archetype? So my question is like, 
how do you uh, deal with uh, people or how do you uh, communicate with them when they come with you with this victim mindset like what's that transformation like um when they're not facing adversity just in everyday life you mean right uh, because we can't wait for adversity to occur right and then we will start channeling that and what i have seen like from from talking to you and listening to you like you're not just waiting for adversity to occur uh, for uh, acting like a warrior right you're acting like mm-hmm. a warrior in your daily life daily so life absolutely how do you communicate yes. this to others um well in every day i mean every day every day we have choices i mean we all have situations i mean if you think about those archetypes of victim warrior victim warrior victim warrior so it's about helping people kind of define what those mean to them mm-hmm. first of all um and then understanding that it's really just um like a power dynamic right it's kind of where are you putting your power your energy your your worth essentially so you like you said we're not going to be facing adversity extreme adversity all the time but there's going to be little moments like even just waking up in the morning if you don't feel well you don't feel like getting up mm. okay well that t- that to somebody to someone might not be a big deal but to to another person that is their battle for the day it's just getting out of bed right so it's channeling that warrior mentality that warrior energy that warrior mm. spirit whatever you want to call it that warrior identity and using it in that moment and knowing that you can that even 5 minutes is better than no minutes and not comparing it that's the so difficult with humans as we compare ourselves to everyone oh well oh, taking a shower today might be seem astronomically difficult for me in my state and where i'm at in my life right now whereas to somebody you know to somebody else they're climbing mount everest well that's going to make me feel even worse and that's going to push me down into that victim uh, victimhood more right? right so it's really this needed to be said Yeah. yeah so it's just really we, it's so everybody's experience is valid for them and um i think that especially right now with the pandemic and what's going on in ukraine and you know all these compa- cross comparisons that people do and like well your trauma isn't as significant as my trauma and i've been through worse and oh this is happening over here it's worse than there etc 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 well that's just re um reigniting or i don't know what the word is but it's essentially helping to put emphasis on this you know victim mentality as being you know not within our control but it is right everything's within our individual control and in how we look at it so mm-hmm. so when people come to see me or when i'm working with people or just talking with people it's like okay well what's your battle today and where do you want to be how do you want to be so if i'm driving in my car and somebody cuts me off or mm-hmm. is driving like a jerk right i might react and get angry but i'm not going to continue that on i'm not going to take that personally because it, it's when we start to personalize things that's when our power and our lack of control comes into play right so if somebody's then i'm not going to take it personally even if i by i accidentally cut somebody off or do something you know the person might be mad at me and might you know flick me off or shout at me or whatever it's not a personal thing so it's when we start to internalize and personalize these uh, situations in these moments in our lives that's when we start to lose control that's when we start to really ident we'll say become that victim in our own minds and in our own lives instead of saying no i have the ability to 
change that. I have the ability to choose my thoughts. I have the ability to self-correct or redirect where I want to go. I may be feeling like this right now and that's okay, but I'm going to do something to kind of put me in the direction of that warrior mindset, that warrior, whatever identity it is for me, whether it's taking a shower, whether it's making your bed, whether it's going to the gym um, or whatever it is for each individual person. Yeah. It's a great tool, right? This identity of a warrior. And yeah. you use this word spirit warrior. So mm. what it means to you, like what is a spirit uh, warrior? A spirit warrior, your warrior spirit is is the heart of who you are, right? That's the the essence of you. So it has nothing to do with religion in any way because it transcends all cultures, all religions. It doesn't matter all genders. It doesn't matter. It's that the essence of the strength that you have inside, you know, your, your ability to persevere, your ability to be resilient, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually meaning uh, in your belief systems and how you believe what you believe is possible, how you view yourself. Um, And that's essentially what I do as a, as a um, energy healer and a spiritual healer and a shaman is I work with people's belief systems, right? What is it that deep down on the surface, we have thoughts, we have emotional reactions, but underneath those are the reasons why, why do we react like that emotionally? Why do we have those thoughts? Those are our beliefs and we can't normally access them in our conscious mind. So Um, because our conscious mind is only 5% of what we can uh, consciously understand, right? So, you know, we might have some some surface understandings, but underneath all of that, you know, if you think of the iceberg, like an iceberg, the tip of the iceberg, you can only see like a tiny bit underneath is, or or the hard drive of your computer. You know, everything in the, 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 the hard drive is what's is what's running the the motor and running our thoughts, running our actions, running our emotions. So, uh, the warrior spirit is that that part of you of anybody that's going to be like, no, you got this. Okay, you might be feeling this way right now. This might be happening right now. Um, but I believe in myself. I know I can get there. I know all those X Y Zs. Um, they're gonna motivate ourselves and um, help us again to save ourselves, to save ourselves in whatever capacity we need it. Yeah. So that's for me why it's it's been essential. It's been essential in my own life, but essential in, in the, the lives of, of the people that I help. So what is the value of turning inward in this whole warrior path? on your warrior journey? Uh, Because that's where all the answers are, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, if you think about the quest for the Holy Grail, well, that's a quest to go inward, to find the the answers, the truth that we're all seeking. We're all looking externally for that, for validation, for reasons, whatever. But internally, we have all the answers we need. So for example, let's say you're my client and you come to me and there's something going on or you're feeling something, some, you're having an emotional reaction or we will go in and explore essentially your subconscious mind to get to the root of why you're feeling that way so that you um, can find the answers within to solve your own problems. Mm. So I'm not ever telling, I'm not a, I'm not a counselor in that I'm going to tell you what those answers are. I'm going to just help you remove all the blocks and the curtains that Mm. we start to acquire in life 
because we're protecting ourselves. We don't, we don't want to get hurt again, or this happened like constantly we're packing on. Remember I said reverse engineering, like unpacking all of that mm-hmm. in life. We're basically packing on all these blocks and these things to protect ourselves. We're getting rid of parts of our, ourselves that we want to protect. Oh, I don't want to get hurt again. Oh, that wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. I'm going to kind of compartmentalize and put that part of me away right. so that I don't get hurt again. So um, so yeah, so what I'm, I help do, people do is unpack that is take away those blocks in a safe way where you feel in control, you get the answers that you need and you realize that you actually have everything that you need within you to heal yourself, to live the life you want to live and to be the person you want to be, right? Not the person that we've kind of become because of because of our circumstances and our conditions in life. So how do we do that? Like, uh, do you ident- like start identifying those keywords or those thoughts and start to re-examine them or uh, it's something else? Who, me like or this my... This process of untangling your, uh, that belief system which you talk about, like this taking that, when we start taking that inward journey, we get like... Mm-hmm there are a lot of barriers in the form of beliefs, which I have uh, observed, like they don't let you see the thing in front of you. And there is always a kind of, we are projecting as you use Mm -hmm. the word, like you always try to project things onto others. Mm -hmm. So how that untanglement look looks like. Um, Well, I mean, so if you think about like, let's say I'm trying to lose weight or I'm trying to get healthier physically. Right. Everybody wants a quick fix. They want the, the pill or the operation that's going to take it all away. But what's underneath that? Why did I get to that state? Why did I become as unhealthy as I, uh, as I allowed myself to become, right? And just as long as it takes you to get to that place with your physical body in the state that you're not it, that you're not happy with, you're going to have to, again, reverse engineer and get back to the place you want to be. So it takes, it's a time and a process of, of, um, actioning, right? So in the healing journey, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. There is an end. It's not like you're, We'll say massage therapy. Well, I love massages. There's no end to it, right? It's not yeah. like you have one massage, two massage, five, ten massages, and you never need mm-hmm. a massage again. Um, yes, like we were talking about the training, right? So you there is no end to training, right? There is no day when you will say that like my training is over. Right? You'll yeah. keep practicing your weaponry. Uh, you can yeah to get better to get better, but as far as healing and like you said, kind of examining or, or resolving all those wounded beliefs that we have, right? Those negative beliefs, those mm-hmm. I am not, I never will, dot, dot, dot. Um, it's like the onion. Like, so, okay, well, right now you may be feeling this. Well, let's get to the bottom of that one. Let's resolve it. It's gone. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden another one pops up. Mm-hmm. So it's really, okay, now let's resolve this one. Oh, here's another thing. Okay, this. And then sometimes if you think of it like um, like a tree, like if you're the tree uh, and you are the root of the tree, then there's the branches and the branches are maybe how you behave, not in healthy ways or whatever. And then, and then at the top of those branches are all the leaves. And then those leaves are the reasons why. So we, or sorry, the effects. So the effects of your behavior. So let's heal all those effects then let's heal all the branches and then let's get to the root. And now we get, uh, sorry, the, the, the trunk So we're closer. And now we get to the root and the root is really who you are. Mm -hmm. So it's really kind of this coming from the top of the tree all the way down. Yeah. So because the effect is right in front of you. So the effects are yeah everywhere. The effects are anything. However, that can lead you to the root. Yeah. Triggers. 
like triggers everybody nowadays it's like oh every trigger we don't want to be triggered trigger warnings trigger warnings Mm. i love triggers because they're opportunities to for me as a healer i'm like oh okay great you're getting triggered why are you triggered because we cannot live like the warrior does not live in a pattern you know life now you know oh my god this doesn't feel good it's scary it feels very uncomfortable it's you don't feel safe those are very real emotions and reactions but there's a reason it's when we feel like we have no other options and we're hopeless and helpless that's when we start to lose control but when you know that there is hope when you know that there is a way to help you regain control of yeah. those triggers, then you start looking at them as opportunities of examining and then most importantly, resolving why you feel that way. And so slowly, like, so again, it's that, re, it's that reverse engineering. Okay, trigger, 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 trigger. You come down to the roots yeah. and now we start rebuilding. How do you want to feel? Dot, 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 right? That's where you get to the manifestation stage. But first you have to, unpack all the reasons why you behave the way you do, why you feel the way you feel, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you manifest. Everybody wants to manifest because that's fun and fluffy and wonderful, but you can't manifest healthy things until you're a healthy person. Cause otherwise you're just going to continue to manifest unhealthy things. Cause 90% of your consciousness is sending out signals of I'm never I will never, I am, uh, I'm not good enough. Like you're sending out those signals, like a radio mm. uh, signals, vibrations, frequencies that we all have. Mm. 90% is sending out negative things mm. based on your wounds and your experiences. So what do you think is coming back to you? Right? All of that stuff. That's what you're manifesting. We're always manifesting. It's just, mm-hmm. what are you manifesting? Those bad relationships that, 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 you know, that, um, um, it finances, right. Great example. What are you manifesting financially? Yeah. Why, why does it keep happening? So it's really this. So the warrior spirit is that, is that aspect of everybody that wants to understand, but not just understand change and face those parts of themselves that are creating those circumstances in their lives. And, um, and, you know, really delving deep into, into those darker places of our, of our mind that we don't want to go. That's why it takes an extreme amount of courage to really do that extreme amount of courage. Cause it's not fun. It's not fun. It's much more fun for me to blame, not fun. I should say, it's easier for me to continue to blame other people mm. and to play the victim than to take ownership of why I may still be feeling why I did. Now, not, I have to clarify, mm. I'm a violence prevention and self-defense instructor. When I say victim identity, I'm not saying that people deserve what happens to them and it's their fault. Acute mm. situation. So like right. when something happens to us, that's different than continuing to play and keep the the effects of that going for years and years and years, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, um, uh, 2016, a man broke into my house and held me at gunpoint in the middle of the night. My two children were asleep and I was a single mom Mm -hmm. and um, he abducted me and stole money from me and um, I, I'm fine. My kids are fine. Uh, we're all safe, but now, but the point being, I did not ask for that to happen. Right. Mm. Um, but I also didn't carry that victim, um, persona beyond that experience. I, I had to heal and process from the trauma and the shock of that. Right. 
But the sooner I was able to kind of move from victim to warrior, okay, that mm. happened. Now I need to let go and resolve and regain my power because he cannot take that from me if I don't let him, if I don't give that to him. If I continue that story and I continue that victim um, mentality in that situation, mm. I'm continuing a relationship with that person, whether or not they know it, right? Right. Because it's like you're, because yeah. in your mind, you're conti- you're, that story is continuing to happen. Your mind doesn't know the difference between today, mm. yesterday, mm. 10 years ago. You, it, it's, it's, if that story is still playing out in your mind, it's still happening in your body, right? Your body's still yeah. reacting to the emotions mm. and all of that. So, and that means from a quantum, quantum shamanic aspect of, time and healing that you're you're still in a relation some type of a relationship or dynamic with that person if that story's still playing out if you're still playing that victim if i'm still in that time and he still has that gun to my head in my mind and i'm still uh, powerless then i can never move on from it i'll never be resolved does that make sense yeah this is the yeah. one thing i think like uh, people don't understand about uh, warriors is like warriors spend all time avoiding war right warrior warrior being a warrior is not about uh, violence there is a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to uh, what a warrior is what being a warrior is uh, like uh, most people think like uh, as you mentioned earlier right we see warriors in movies like superhero movies or movies like 300 or what not so we have this imagery of a warrior where warrior is this aggressive person who is always uh, looking forward to war and he's uh, this evil being strategizing how to kill others and uh, what not and like nothing can be more counterintuitive than that like what being a true warrior is like what, how what i have observed like warrior warriors like true warriors are the last one to pick up the sword right and they spend all time strategizing how to avoid violence like how to avoid wars like because they know like what, what the war is and what war like gives you right war is not good for anybody so but sometimes it's necessary i mean i think right i mean that's what a warrior understand like uh, what he doesn't wants war as you mentioned earlier like he uh, obviously we are talking in metaphor so nobody wants trauma and nobody wants bad things to happen but the difference between warrior and a victim is like when that happens when it's inevitable or it has happened so warrior takes it as a opportunity and a victim takes it as a, a kind of my life is destroyed and what will i do now and all those sorts of things so mm-hmm. what do you think like uh, are other misunderstandings like what truly being a warrior is and what are the misunderstandings out there um i don't know if there's a misunderstanding because <clears throat> again historically i mean the yeah. word and the identity comes from those warriors like the people who trained to kill and you know there's offensive and there's defensive defend or attack and i'm i'm not a I'm not in the military, never done anything like that. I do work with people in the military um, and veterans who have, who are in the modern sense, traditional warriors. Um, so I think it's really subjective and that's where it kind of becomes tricky and, and watered down a little bit. And a lot of, and even myself, like I, I really mm. struggle with the, misuse of the identity to a certain degree uh, in that you know if if, if right. we're saying you know 
And I don't even know if it's a misuse. Again, it's all about defining what it means to you, right? And not taking it away from the people who do fight, who do defend, who do not fight in the, um, I'm going to assault people or, you know, that kind of sense, but in the, I'm protecting and I'm, you know, training to protect my country or to protect, you know, whatever, in whatever capacity Let's that. Let's talk about that like what are you training for? For example, you train, right? You train in weaponry. So, well, I mean, Bruce yeah. Lee, there's a famous quote Bruce Lee said, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Hmm. Right? So we can be naive and That's want... Funny. Well, we could want, I could, yeah. I could dream a world where there's no violence and everybody's lives mm. peacefully and loves each other, but that's just not reality. We have to, we still, as much as we work towards a certain path and we, we want the best for ourselves and in, in, in the, the people we love in our lives in the world, we also have to be realistic and understand that mm. humanity is a very bumpy um bump well it's just it's just a rocky place there's no certainties and we're dealing with a lot of um fractals of wounded beliefs and wounded ideologies and wounded stuff so to think that we don't need to train physically in my opinion and experience is pretty naive so i b- do believe that we need to train physically because again, I am responsible for myself and for protecting myself and my family. And so that's number one physically, but then I also need to train mentally, emotionally, and spiritually just as well so that I know that I don't abuse those. I don't use that power we'll say to harm others. So I am using it defensively rather than offensively, like you're talking about. So when we are strong and healthy inside, we have more control over how we react and engage physically in life as well, right? So it's where there's there's that kind of misplace of um, power, but also what we value. So if I'm putting all my energy into training physically, I physically, I would need to train this, dot, 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 and I'm not doing it on the other aspects, then that, that's a health, uh, sorry, an unhealthy balance of my own power. And when we're not balanced, things can flip or, um, you know, we might react uh, more adversely to situations in a negative way. Yeah. Um, yeah. that's the beauty about martial arts, right? A lot of martial arts, it's that not just the physical training, but it's also the internal training as well. Learning con- to, to control your emotions, learning to, um, know when to engage and not react that kind of, that kind of, um, mental, uh, and physical training and emotional training to a certain extent. So, um, I do think it's essential to train physically as well, yeah. but not alone not not just in that capacity as a warrior i should say yeah this is one of the fascinating thing which like it's one of the fascinating and unique aspect of you because you come from this uh, spiritual aspect from this spiritual perspective in life and uh, most people who come from that aspect aspect which uh, like most people who are very spiritually developed they have this utopia in then in their mind like this like this the world like an ideal world should be like this right and there is this refusal which i have found to although they talk about accepting and accepting reality and they use that word but they mm-hmm. don't want to see the word world for what it is and they don't want to be prepared for that they want to be prepared for that kind of ideal world and they want everybody to be on that train with them and so this is the unique aspect about you that 
at the yeah. same time you're training for actuality right and not that yeah. in spiritual sense you're saying i'm i'm going to accept my reality right in a way you're not accepting that you're saying when that situation will happen i will not i'm not going to accept that i'm going to fight back right of course yeah. of course and it also helps you realize your true capacities like how do you know how strong you are if you don't push yourself beyond your own capacities like if i'm training it, it so many people we learn in different ways right there's some people who learn mentally some people learn physically some people orally um visually but as soon as you start to push yourself in a physical way you realize really what you're capable of you're like wow i have the ability to um you know, there's a there's a there's a an energy inside of me a, a capacity inside of me i didn't realize was there and so then right. you have that to draw upon when you need it in other areas of your life mm -hmm. so to be able to kind of so exa for example with the sword and the shield i mean there's so many um It, historically, there's so many uses for it in a spiritual way as well, right? There's so much, if you just think of the sword and how we've used it or how it's been kind of um, personified uh, as this, you know, knightly thing. And it, it brings not just physical power, but spiritual power. And I mean, they knight people in, uh, in Great Britain yeah. and they use a sword. Why do they use a sword, right? Because it's a symbol of power. And capacity and even back in the day historically people if you didn't have money you wouldn't have swords because it costs a lot of money to have a sword to make a sword it cost a lot of money so right. sword was a symbol of power not just physical power but um success and all of those yeah. things so when you hold a weapon like that it immediately gets you into this state of personal power not a i'm going to take over and i'm going to kill you power but look what i'm capable of look of what who i am and what i can do and all of this stuff that i didn't it reignites a part of you mm -hmm. um and a part of us in society especially now when we're so disconnected from each other and you know off everything is so I'm not going to say easy because it's harder in a, in a different way, but right. easier in that we don't have to go hunt and gather. We live in, you know, climate controlled. It's homes. easier. Right? It's easier to Comparatively, live. It's easier. It's easier to live, but not mm -hmm. easier to be because we're so lost in ourselves. We have no purpose. We don't know who we are. So when you start to connect with those kind of pri you said the warrior, the primal aspect, It's like, oh, my, it reignites this like, oh, my God, like, yes, a sword. Do I need a sword today in 2022? No, of course not. And I would look super silly if I'm walking around with a sword. Like it, but <laughs> it awakens a part of you of remembering and knowing that is asleep, that usually is asleep in modern day because mm -hmm. we don't have to. We don't have those realities. Um. So while I might never need a sword in real life yeah. today, I need the energies. I need the consciousness that it offers me. I need, mm. I need the awakening, the capacities. I need all of that in order to function in different ways in 2022. Mm. And speaking of sword, I think like for the most part, modern war is psychological in nature. So oh, in the past... Fair. the war was in the battlefield but now your mind is the battlefield right and there are a lot of things which you are in battle with inwardly and also outwardly there are many organizations many people kind of weaponizing your own primal instincts uh, for food and sex in the form of uh, porn or in the form of fast food and whatnot so mm -hmm. there is this outward war we are 
like constantly into and then there is this inward war as we discussed earlier right mm -hmm. so there are this two aspects which are simultaneously going on and this is where i think the modern war is so as we are talking about sword so sword is a tool right so most of the tools i think we need now is psychological in nature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i wanted to know like what are those psychological tools which you have in your arsenal which you use uh, on a daily basis and few of us we have talked about which is self examination going inward right mm -hmm. so what are the others Well, I mean, if we go back again to the weapons training, the physical training, or the say the the fighting aspects of of the warrior training, again, if we tap into that capacity and that energy and that knowing that we can defend ourselves, yeah. that we feel strong, That's the spirit that, part of the warrior, that, yeah, and then we can transfer that. into the mm. mental right so it's like um it's like taking it if you just think of energy as you know energy is malleable i mean it's it's we can do what we want with it right. it just depends where do we put it so here's this energy i'm feeling strong physically i'm feeling like i'm capable i i feel good and confident about myself that way well why can't we transfer that to the other areas why why am i overthinking why uh, why do i beat myself up why am i judging other people why do i feel jealous of people why am i um uh projecting or resenting xyz you, you know so here's this power this ability that we feel physically which is wonderful mm -hmm. and we need that because it's extremely uh, it helps us feel alive and capable yeah but now let's transfer that into the other areas and if you can't then there's there's that block we i talked about earlier right why mm -hmm. why why do you feel strong and capable and confident in this part but not in this part and that's where the beliefs come in and that's where the warrior spirit is essential in helping you go inwardly to face those internal battles because it always comes within and that's also how it helps us avoid prolonged trauma right the effects of trauma or heal from it and come out of it because after the war is done who are you left with you right after somebody cuts you off in traffic and is pissed or an accident happens who are you left with you so right. it always comes back to self and while we cannot end all battles in the world we cannot intend everybody to be compassionate and forgiving and loving and one even though that yes is the ultimate goal um if we can't do that within ourselves well then what hope is there we can, uh, you know you can start with you i can start with me and that is uh, a great place to begin for sure and also you talked about uh, power i think why most people uh, get reactive when it comes to this word warrior is because this engagement of power in that and when power comes into play and same thing with the money right when why people get so reactive when it comes to money because my what is money the people who have lots and lots of money they are the most powerful in today's world right so yeah i mean so but power yeah power becomes seductive right it's very seductive in nature yeah and we can weaponize anything right and then we don't have this wisdom in other aspects of your life which we talk about like uh, that mm -hmm. spirit aspect and mind aspect and we have been solved that our mm -hmm. traumas and what not and we are hurt people kind of trying to hurt people out there so that power the person 
becomes like this evil warrior right which is mm-hmm. out there trying to slay anybody who or anything comes in his path to get what he wants right i think this is what makes us scared right and the person who will go inward he will not find butterflies and rainbow there right he'll encounter that dark energy so mm-hmm. how do you tackle that and how do you integrate that into this more like what you call it spirit warrior right some people mm-hmm. call it peaceful warrior or they use other words um well i mean you brought up a lot of great points so power isn't bad money isn't bad hmm. we all deserve to have as much power as we want we all deserve to have as much money as we want it's how it's used yeah um and so the moment we stop to we stop examining ourselves and we stop and we start giving that away we should we should say i mean mm. the moment we start kind of giving that to other people who've hurt us um to other situations in our lives you know again this kind of us and them right it's their fault their fault their fault this fault oh it's money's fault that i'm like this it's that 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 well that you're basically taking all of this capacity that you have this power mm. and you're putting it in, uh, in somebody else's or something else's hands and that's going to mm. keep keep you in that perpetual victim identity so that's a, like the warrior isn't the warrior persona energy identity whatever isn't bad while it can be used bad and it has and yes there are people today that will i mean if you think about the um, the american the insurrection um when you know a bunch of qanon people stormed the capital and you know that guy with the big buffalo helmet whatever you know no doubt they would identify themselves as being quote unquote warriors mm-hmm. but it are they i mean they're fighting for what they believe is that does that make them a warrior that's where the kind of that's where like i love having these discussions and i love talking with um people about it because it really it comes down to a personal thing it's like here's your power here's your capacity first of all if you don't know you have it well then we need to get you reconnected it's even that. more dangerous it is more dangerous because then you could abuse it or use it or you want to take it from other people because it will uh, you don't know that you have it and some day it might come out in some kind of circumstances and because uh, a part of being a warrior is to control having control over that power right and yeah. you don't have control so no yeah, yeah. you're going to try and consume it consume it from others because you don't feel like you have it within yourself so that's the whole the beauty about uh the star wars stories and you know all of those um heroes journey you know mm-hmm. about coming back to going through that kind of deep dive into the caverns of yourself and to face those darker those darker aspects mm-hmm. and then coming out enlightened because you've realized mm-hmm. you know how you've used or abused your own self but also others because of that disconnect from that personal power that you had or didn't know right. you had and yeah. so that warrior aspect will reconnect you with that yeah. in a healthy way if you use it in a healthy way but mm. again it all comes to consciousness but if you're not even conscious about it mm. then you're just going to go through life kind of again like it's this exchange of oh i feel <gasps> I feel weak, I feel powerless. How can I make that better? Well, I better consume something to help mm-hmm. at least temporarily make me feel like I'm in control. Okay. There is this adage out there I read maybe on Instagram that uh, people think that powerful men are dangerous, but wait until you see what a uh, weak man is capable of. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. I mean look at Napoleon right internally he you know 
very weak spirited person who needed to control everything around him. And so he consumed Mm -hmm. and destroyed under the guise of helping other people and creating positive change. But then what happened? Power corrupts, right? Like you, like you said, like, it's like this, 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 that, that wolf uh, clothed in a sheep's skin. Talk to me about uh, fear. Like what is your relationship with fear and facing fear and sitting with fear and eventually you talk about going beyond fear. So Mm -hmm. how does that look like? So fear I mean, you've probably experienced that anything you want is beyond fear, right? Beyond that, mm-hmm. that place of fear. Whenever I personally come up against something that I'm really adverse to, I really don't want, or I'm really fearful of, mm-hmm. it's usually because I need that, we'll say medicine, whatever it is that has to offer me as far as personal growth is concerned or um, in life. Um, because often we are most afraid of the things that we truly want, which seems so backwards, so backwards, you know? So does there comes a point where you start going beyond fear? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. We're going to feel fear all the time, especially based on our experiences in life. I mean, people who don't ever really put themselves, who have lived very, padded, safe, complacent lives. And that's not a judgment. I'm just stating as far as some people's lives aren't as um, difficult as others, we should say, but they are in some ways. Again, we're not, I'm not trying to compare traumas. Um, But let's say somebody who's trained or trains in weapon arts or martial arts or physical physical things where they really push themselves or even sports push themselves beyond their comfort zones Mm -hmm. continuously kind of try and place themselves in uncomfortable situations to grow beyond whatever. So somebody who does that versus somebody who's always kind of needs to feel safe, needs to feel like they know exactly where they're going when they're faced with fear might have a different reaction than the other person who's who's put themselves in that just uncomfortable place and that fearful place more often because they know the person who's continuously training to push themselves through fear to push themselves through those those uncomfortable moments is going to get there and be like okay i've been here before is this real you know what level of safety or what level of um, fear is this? Can I get through this? Of course you can. Why do I know that? Because I've done it before. Um, But people who haven't, who continue, you know, continue to kind of, again, like pad themselves from being uncomfortable or being placed Mm -hmm. in those fearful places might not know that they can, Mm -hmm. even though they can, of course they can. It just might might feel a little bit harder that mountain might be be a little bit steeper also it becomes kind of like a, a adventure right as you mentioned earlier like a warrior is like now i know <laughs> like i didn't know i fear this thing and i encountered yeah. this and now yeah. i know that i fear that thing so there is this like which like i have been through as i told you earlier in our conversation like i have been through a lot of psychological warfare which is uh, we are going through this mental health crisis as a society so mm-hmm. i had my share of that mm-hmm. and one thing why uh, i talk a lot i use this metaphor of warrior a lot right and i highly resonate and many people like you resonate with as well so what i found very useful is this change of perspective which warriors have, they don't see problems. They see challenges. They see an adventure, right? When Mm -hmm. something wrong happens, so they're not like, oh, this got fucked up, what I'm going to do. They're like, this is 
a new challenge which is in front of me and i'm going to go through this it's an opportunity to become stronger in the process right mm -hmm. absolutely they they are they're all opportunities for growth and when we learn those lessons when we gain better insight and understanding then we kind of can graduate to the next level and it's you know if you think about our ancestors who didn't have all the roads paved for them they had to you know carve out those paths and no doubt that was terrifying and they don't know what's on the other end they don't know where they're going they don't have those certainties that people like if I do this, I want to know that X, Y, Z is waiting for me on the other side. Well, but that's not realistic. Mm. Um, and so the warrior aspect of all of us is that part of us that's going to be like, mm, whatever is waiting on the other side, you're going to be okay. Mm. You're going to face it. And it may be challenging. And it may be scary. But you have everything that you need inside of you to face that. And that's where the training comes in, the physical training, mm. the mental training, the spiritual training. So again, those belief systems, mm. the emotional training, that's where all of those come in so that you know when you're continuing down those unknown paths through those fears right. that you have everything that you need within you mm. to face it, to get through it to achieve whatever it is you're, you're trying to achieve and, and get wherever you're trying to get rather than yeah. depending on other people to do it for you. Yeah. It's this knowing in your mind and heart and soul and body that whatever mm -hmm. happens, I'll be okay. Yeah. It's like nothing is yeah. out there which can hurt me in that internal way. Right. I mean, it's a, there's no guarantees in life. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is people want guarantees. If I oh, love you, I want I to give you, I want to guarantee yeah. that you're going to love me forever and you're never going to leave me. So awesome. Well, there's that displacement of power. Now I'm mm -hmm. putting all of my worth in my, my future dreams and my beliefs and everything about who I am and what I'm capable of onto you. And you have all the power to destroy that. Instead of saying, you know what, no matter what you do, I'm still going to be okay. And I'm not going to be fearful of showing you how much I love you because you can't take that away from me. I'm just being authentic to myself. And part of being authentic is, is being able to express how we feel, what we want without the fear of somebody abusing or using that. And there's so this, I mean, it's this gigantic circle of like, you know, then, then, then you think about awareness and being aware and, and, being aware of our other people, like there's so many facets to this, but when it comes down to it, it's believing that you have the capacities and that you're going to be okay, no matter what. Um, and having faith, right. And that's something that we as humans are so disconnected from is faith because again, there's no certainties in faith. Right. Okay. Like I can't see spirit, God, creator, whatever you want to call it. How do I know it exists? How do I know what, if something bad happens to me that I'm going to be okay? Well, I can't trust in other people, but I can trust in myself. Mm -hmm. And if I can't trust in myself, well, then where am I? Right? Like if I can't trust in myself and believe in myself and, and know that I'm capable of whatever, yeah. Then who can I trust? Right. I think uh, this is the right place to end this conversation. And you are truly inspirational. I want to sit mm -hmm. here and just want to listen to you. But unfortunately, we need to end this somewhere. So quickly tell them where they can find you on the web and your work. Sure, absolutely. Uh, my website's bethsturdivant.com. I'm also on Facebook, uh, Beth Sturdivant, Warrior Spirit Healer, and then Instagram, Beth Sturdivant, Warrior Spirit Healer. Um, I have some pretty exciting, massive projects coming in the future. Uh, one that is specific to 
um, really helping to embody and train that warrior within us all, transcending again, all cultures, all genders, everyone. Um, and that's coming in the next year. Uh, so I would recommend some um, to get on the mailing list for valhalla-ottawa.com yeah. and getting on the mailing list for that uh, to stay updated on that progress of this, this pretty monumental, amazing place, valhalla-ottawa.com. Amazing. I'll link that, everything like you can send me the links and I'll add them in the description of this video or the podcast. Sure. Um, thank you so much for doing this. I'm thank really you for having grateful me. and let's do this again sometime whenever you had time. This was fun. It would be an honor. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on as your guest. Yeah. So all right, guys, until next time, stay strong, stay stubborn and keep on climbing. <laughs>